Hey guys, it's Will from Tested. Uh, as you may or may not know, last Friday the PlayStation 4 came out, and of course we've been testing it uh, all weekend, testing it all weekend. Um, but like a lot of you, we had questions the moment we heard that Sony would let end users upgrade the hard drive to a two and a half inch mobile hard drive of their choice, like this one. This is the 500 gig drive that comes in every PlayStation 4 sold. Um, it's a relatively slow traditional hard drive. It's made by HGST, which is now owned by Western Digital. Uh, and it's pretty unremarkable. But since you can take any hard drive you want, put it in the PS4, install the system software on it by downloading it from a website and putting it on a USB thumb drive and then booting into a special mode, everybody immediately wanted to know what would happen if you put one of these guys in it. This is an SSD. It's a solid state flash storage. This is a 250 gigabyte Samsung 840 Evo SSD. It's pretty much one of the better price per performance ratios. The wire cutter recommends it among a bunch of other sites. Uh, and it's a reliable, good SSD. Now the problem with SSDs is that they're pretty expensive. So this SSD for 250 gigabytes of storage is about 175 bucks. Uh, to contrast, this 500 gig regular hard drive costs you know, 50 to $70, somewhere in there. Uh, probably cheaper for Sony than it is for you and me. However, there's a third option on the performance front too. It's a Seagate hybrid drive. It's part normal hard drive, part SSD. Uh, the way this works is really straightforward. There is a spinning disk on it, just like any normal hard drive, but there's also a relatively large amount of flash memory on the drive, which the drive can use to cache important stuff uh, you know, that you access frequently on a Windows machine. It, boot, it keeps Windows and your most frequently used apps like your browser in there. And it just kind of happens magically in the background. You don't have to really know what's going on. The drive is smart enough to look at and know which part of the drives get used frequently and just saves them in the, in the flash memory. So we weren't sure how that would work with the file system in a PlayStation 4. We wanted to test all of these. So what I did was swapped out each of them, installed PlayStation 4 software 1.5, the current version, and then ran a couple of tests. The first test is the boot test. Uh, what we did was we started from a complete off state, pressed the power button, listened for the beep, synced up all the PlayStations on the beep, and then, uh, well, you can see here, the video shows how long it takes each one to boot. Uh, the SSD booted in about 19 and a half seconds. The uh, um, hybrid drive booted in about 20.3 seconds. And the default hard drive booted in about 25.67 seconds or thereabouts. The upshot is that by spending money on an SSD, you get about, you know, six and a half seconds, six and a third seconds uh, savings. Every time you boot up, it's a little bit faster. Now the standby doesn't work right now in the current PS4 firmware, so we weren't able to test that. Presumably you'll see another gain there, but we'll know that in the future. Um, next we want to test games. There's two different ways to get games for the PlayStation 4. You can download them from the store, you can buy them on a disc. Either way, they have to be installed to the hard drive. So what we're testing on the first one is the time it takes to launch a disc-based game, in this case, Knack, uh, from when you press the button on the controller to launch the game to when it gets to the start, press any key to start game screen. Uh, you can see here, we're looking at about uh, 39 and two thirds seconds for the default drive. That's a fairly long time. 33 and two thirds seconds for the hybrid drive and about 34 seconds flat for the SSD. So again, you shave about five seconds off of the load time. Uh, we weren't able to test level loads here because most of the saves that we had for NAC actually jumped straight into a cutscene, and that seemed a little bit weird to, to test because sometimes the PS4 is doing background loading behind cutscenes. Next up is a download based game. So this is installed to the hard drive too, just like NAC was, uh, but it doesn't have to check the disc to make sure that you're authorized to play the game. Uh, the first game we tested was Killzone. We started at the menu screen, hit the button to load the most recent campaign save, and timed from when I press the button until the campaign loads. You can see it's 39 seconds for the SSD, which it turns out is actually quite fast. 42 seconds for the hybrid drive and 60 seconds for the 500 gig default drive. Now, it seems like a pretty big gap. You're looking at 21 seconds between the two, between the fastest and the slowest, but we'll get to the pros and cons of the SSD in a little bit. You know, it, 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 this may not be a closed case. The last game is Rezogun. This is a downloadable only title. It's one that you get free when you sign up for PlayStation Plus. We wanted to load it and see what, what 
kind of time it takes. And it's basically the difference in th two thirds of a second, 0.667 seconds between the fastest SSD and the slowest, the, the default hard drive. The hard drive is designed to be swapped easily. All you do is pop, pop the plastic cover off the case, unscrew one screw, pull out this drive caddy, and then remove the four screws that hold the hard drive in place, replace those four screws, slide it back into its slot, and screw it back in place, and put the cover back on. It's really important to put the cover back on because that controls airflow on that part of the PS4, and you don't want to leave it off because you'll probably overheat or do something bad. We've run some tests. You've seen what it looks like in the real world, the dif difference between the SSD and the default hard drive. Um, in some cases, the performance results were pretty good. Killzone was a lot faster. 21 seconds is a ton any way you slice it uh, between the default hard drive and the SSD. However, there's a catch. The default, S this SSD we tested is a relatively inexpensive 250 gig model. It costs about 175 bucks. If you wanna go up and get a, a drive with the same capacity as the stock hard drive, you have to spend a lot more money. They're well over $300. And it, it's really hard for me to justify spending $400 on a drive for a $400 gaming console, especially when the benefit is, you know, like I said, 20 seconds once per map load. And in the games that I've played so far, at least, there aren't that many map loads. Um, the boot time benefit is pretty good, but again, it's not worth 350 bucks on top of the cost of the PS4, so don't get crazy. Now, the hybrid drive is a different situation. It's about 110 bucks for a one terabyte drive. That's twice the capacity of the default drive, and it's also a lot faster. Now, there are gotchas. With the hybrid drive, the first time you load any piece of content, it pulls it off of the spinning platters of the disk. That means it's gonna be slow, just like the default 500 gigabyte hard drive. However, for stuff that you use most frequently, it does actually cache that content on the flash memory in the drive. This particular drive is only eight gigabytes of onboard flash. You can get them up to 64 gigabytes. They're, the price difference is about 15 or $20. Uh, I only got this one because the other one was out of stock when I was ordering and we wouldn't have it in time to do this video. If you want more space in your PS4, 500 gigabytes isn't going to be enough for you, which is actually a real concern because game installs so far have ranged up to like 30 and 40 gigabytes. When you're talking about 400 gigabytes of usable space on the default drive, you're looking at 10 to 20 games installed at any one time. And since every single game that you play, whether it's on a disc or not, has to be installed to the hard drive, you're probably gonna run out of space at some point in the future, and it's unclear how the PS4 software is gonna manage that space for you. If you're gonna have to keep constantly uninstalling and reinstalling stuff, it, it seems like a big boondoggle. So spending a little bit of extra money on a larger hard drive, maybe now, maybe in the future, does actually make sense. Um, when you do that, look at hybrid drives, because they're not terribly much more expensive than a normal default hard drive. You're looking at a 20 or $30 price gap between a one terabyte laptop drive and a one terabyte hybrid drive, and you get a big performance boost at least the second time you run something, the second time you access a map, whatever. So from the testing we've done so far, you'll see that benefit the most if you're running games that you access the same content frequently. If you're playing Call of Duty Ghosts on your PS4 and you're constantly loading the same 10 or 15 maps, you're going to see faster map, time, map load times than people using standard hard drives. If you're playing Killzone and playing multiplayer, same thing. If you play a lot of single player stuff and access most content only one time throughout the life of the game, you're not gonna see as big a benefit and it may not be worth spending the extra 20 or $30 on the hybrid drive. But that's our recommendation for the PlayStation 4 hard drive. If you're gonna upgrade, if you need more space, if 500 gigabytes isn't enough for you, consider shelling out 20 or 30 bucks more for a larger hybrid drive than you would for just a stock hard drive. And don't spend money on an expensive SSD for a PlayStation 4, at least not right now. Uh, if you're gonna buy an SSD, put that in your laptop or your desktop computer where you actually feel the benefit. For Tested, I'm Will, we'll see you guys next time.